Although plantar fasciitis is one of the most common painful conditions that we podiatrists treat, the diagnosis and treatment is not always straightforward. Check this out. To understand plantar fasciitis, you first must understand the plantar fascia. The plantar fascia is outlined in blue in this model, although in real life it's white. The plantar fascia is a thick fibrous tissue that connects the heel of the foot to the ball of the foot. It's also somewhat elastic, so it serves two purposes. One, to protect the underlying structures, such as the muscles, tendons, and bones, and two, because it's somewhat elastic, it works as a shock absorber for when we're running, jumping, and walking. Plantar fasciitis is inflammation of this elastic tissue. Most commonly, it occurs on the inside or the medial side of the heel, but it can occur also in the arch or anywhere else throughout the plantar fascia. Plantar fasciitis is very common. In fact, most people may experience it sometime during the life, even for a brief period. I've even experienced it a time or two. Although most plantar fasciitis pain is in the heel, not all heel pain is plantar fasciitis. What we first have to understand is the differential diagnosis or what other issues there could be causing this heel pain. Other causes of heel pain that the doctor has to rule out are bursitis, nerve entrapment, fat pad atrophy, we see this a lot in our seniors, tarsal tunnel syndrome, stress fracture or maybe full fracture of the heel bone, a foreign body, muscle injury, infection, a tumor of the bone, and a heel spur. In order to develop a proper treatment plan, the doctor has to first determine the cause. There are many causes of plantar fasciitis, including flat feet or high arch feet, obesity, although not everyone who gains weight will develop this problem. I have seen women late in their term of pregnancy develop plantar fasciitis because of the rapid weight gain, trauma to the foot, a sudden increase in high impact activities, such as a new exercise class. I don't know what it is about Zumba, but it creates a lot of plantar fasciitis. Poor footwear choices. If you wear flip-flops and go to Disney World for 12 hours, you're gonna pay the price. And then, chronic overuse activities such as occupations that require people to be on their feet many hours a day every day. The most important information that a doctor can receive from a patient is the patient history or what the patient tells us of their experience, the what, when, why, where, and how of their foot problem. A common symptom of plantar fasciitis and one that rules out most of the causes of heel pain is postatic dyskinesia. This is a condition in where there is intense pain in the heel after long periods of rest, especially after waking up in the morning and standing up to go get the day started. When we sleep or when we rest, our feet are in this position. The toes are pointed downward. However, when we get up from resting, and we put our foot on the floor, the foot goes here, and all the body weight is now placed on the foot and that intense, sharp pain can strike into the heel. This is post-static dyskinesia. Some people think plantar fasciitis is the same as having a heel spur. A heel spur is an extra growth of bone on the bottom of the heel or the back of the heel. A person can have plantar fasciitis without a heel spur or a person can have a heel spur without plantar fasciitis. Here's an x-ray of a patient of mine who was having foot pain somewhere else, and in the x-ray, we see this huge heel spur. However, she had no heel pain. After gathering the patient history and performing a full examination, the doctor may require additional testing, such as an x-ray, MRI, or ultrasound, to confirm suspicions or to rule out other causes. The most challenging part of plantar fasciitis is that there is often more than just one cause. Usually it's a combination of those list of things that I mentioned before. Therefore, it is up to the doctor and the patient to figure out these causes 
so that a treatment plan can be developed. One or a combination of the following treatment options may be necessary to solve the problem of plantar fasciitis. Corticosteroid injections, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, foot orthoses, commonly known as orthotics, physical therapy, either at home that the patient does him or herself or at the physical therapist's office, shockwave therapy, or if all else fails, surgery. So if you're having heel or arch pain and think you have plantar fasciitis, don't self-diagnose. Google cannot tell you everything. As soon as you can, see a podiatrist, work with that doctor to determine the causes of your issues so that a great treatment plan can be developed to get rid of this problem once and for all. Thank you for watching this video. Like it with a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell so you will know when a great new video has been uploaded. Share this with your family and friends, especially those that are suffering from healing arch pain. But most importantly, take care of your body.